got the notification that it went live. It's not up on the screen yet. I have no idea. What are you doing? Um, well, when I do that, so I'm turning it off. I just turn it on. So what are we tying tonight? Uh, we're going to tie we're going to tie a couple of, uh, of poppers. Uh, two of my favorites. These are going to be smallmouth sized poppers, uh, but you can tie them in a bunch of different sizes. Just bear with us. We're having a bit of a difficulty getting everything up and running. So we got a we got a few minutes here. So we'll be all right. We had a couple pretty big storms roll through here last week. I'm not sure if that's kind of lagging things yeah. up or whatever. I think we had a hurricane and about a tornado and a half in the past week. Yeah. It's been interesting. Last time you updated the iPad? Uh, I don't know. I know there's an update it's been trying to do, and I, and I can't get it to do it. Michael Collier says hi. Hey, Mike. Can they use can these poppers be used for anything besides largemouth bass? Uh, well, these are these are actually going to be smallmouth size poppers, but I mean, I, th there's different size. You can stripers. We we fish them for. Um, Tyler was throwing the uh, one of them, an articulated version of one of them for snakehead today. So oh, let me turn this down. All right. All right. Bear with us, guys. We're having a, um, we've had some storms move through in the last week and um, we uh, just getting everything up and running. We typically start at seven or about five after. So just bear with us. Hey, Duke, what's up, buddy? So with the iPad, everything pops up differently than it used to. So the comments are there. So it may be more difficult for you to read. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> Help me. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that at all. All right. So we're just at seven o'clock. Get just bear with us a couple more minutes here. Yeah, I can't. I can't see him. I'm gonna have to read them. Yeah. Hey Tim, you all healed up? Yeah, I'm. I'm as good as I'm going to get. How'd y'all make out from the storm? We had six inches of rain. Um, Jerry, it was crazy here. Um, Tyler and I were away and uh, my wife called me 
and Tyler's car was parked out front of the house and, and the water coming down, the high water mark on his car was about midway up the door. Um, it, it, the, the storm that, that we had here on Friday was, was just, just crazy, just absolutely crazy. So, but we're here now having a little bit, you think, are we good, Tyler? I think we're good. All right. I think we're good. I had a little bit of difficulty. I don't know if that's to do with the storms or not, but, uh, 701, this gives us a couple, two more minutes, maybe get, get some people signed on and, and then we'll get started. How's everybody? Can you hear me? Um, the, the, is the sound okay? Can you hear me okay? Is the picture good? Let me know if we need to make any adjustments. Braden's watching, Will Miller's watching. Australia. I think we're good at 701. Okay. All right. So I'm just waiting. Can everybody hear me okay? I just want to make sure before we start, the microphone's working. It's a bit of a delay here. So, okay. All good. Sound and video good. Okay. Picture and sound great. All right, guys. We're, we're, we're going to get started. So, um, Sunday night, seven o'clock again. We're here. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while since uh, since we've been on. Tyler and I have, have been on it uh, about seven weeks ago, I think. Um, I had a little little issue there around the Fourth of July. It's been five weeks since that happened, so we're pretty much healed up. So we're back in the saddle here. Um, while I was away, we had uh, let's see, Keith Keith did one. He did some intruders. Uh, Braden did that uh, big popper. That that one was really cool. Um, Tom Weir did the uh, the kind of production tying with that wire body nymph, and I, I like that idea a lot. Um, the the way that he did that, and the way you guys could could watch him tie the pattern and um, ask questions at, at different times during the uh, during the process was was cool. And then last week Tony did that uh, that marabou or bunny boo uh, streamer, which was which was good. Um, you guys keep showing up on Sundays. Uh, the numbers are good. So as long as the numbers are good, we're going to keep doing this. Um, I was looking today. Casey has us scheduled. Um, we we're all the way out through the end of November into October, I believe. Um, so that's good. Uh, you're going to see me about every second or third week, and then we'll have an ambassador or a team guy um, pop on and, and do some of their stuff. Pending any core. Yeah, pending any cooler, but me falling off a cooler again. Yeah, well, I won't it be. It was a casting platform as a Yeti cooler. I won't be falling <laughs> off a cooler because I will not be getting on a cooler again. You do uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. So, um, so anyhow, um, we would encourage you guys to uh, to share this uh, to your personal feed. We've been doing that for a couple of weeks. Uh, you guys have really, really kind of been into that. Hey, Tommy, what's up, man? Glad you got your uh, your base the other day. Um, for every 50 shares that we get during the live feed, this is only during the live feed. Last week during the live feed, we had like 110. So we gave away two of the Norvice neck gator. There you go. All right. So we have these, we got Norvice and we got O'Neill's fly fishing neck gators. We're giving these away. So for every 50 shares, we pick a random number. And um, if we get a hundred, we give away two. If we get 200, we give away four and um, contact you, send us your address and we'll mail one out. Uh, we did get a question. Um, we did get a question the other day. Are they going to be for sale? And yes, these, these will be up on the Norvice website. We, we actually ordered, um, we have stripping guards coming too. So the guards that you put on your fingers and we're going to offer them as a package and we're just waiting for the, um, the stripping guards to come in, but they will uh, be up on the website here shortly. Um, so with that being said, um, we're going to get started. We're going to tie a couple of poppers tonight. The, uh, the first one is, is we call it O'Neill's twist and pop. It's in a bleeding shad color. We do these in, in this, um, this shad color, which is, which is predominantly white. And then I do them in a black and chartreuse. And I just ran upstairs to see if we had any black and chartreuse in the box and I couldn't find any. 
and we do it in fire tiger which are, are my three go-to um, popper colors honestly if you did white and black you you would probably be fine so we fish a lot of poppers when when we're smallmouth fishing and we fish a lot of a popper that's called a boogle bug which uh which i really like the the boogle bug it's a it's a hard-faced popper so it gives a, a kind of a higher pitched um pop when it, it, it it's a really light pop and these we're going to tie with these um these uh flyman double barrel heads and they're a, they're a soft popper and they give more of a kind of a, a a chug sound they sound a lot like when we were kids and we were fishing the um the hula poppers they sound a lot like that so i've got a um one b b10s this is still to this as we stand right now, my favorite hook. We've been using a lot of the Eric's um, hooks and, and I like those. I really like that, um, that TP610, <clears throat> but I still, I still keep going back to these, um, to these um, Gamagatsu, the B10S. This is a size one. And we had a question earlier, can you tie these bigger um, and scale them up and scale them down? And yes, you can. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. We have enough, we have enough tires interested and we're covered for the entire 2021 year. So that's into 2021. into 2021. Okay. So that's good. So as long as you guys keep showing up, we're going to keep doing it. So I've got um, my thread tied on. I'm tying with, uh, this is um, Semperfly's uh, classic uh, six ot classic wax thread. We've got a one odd B10S. I'm tying, I'm using my large jaws and the Magnum hubs on this setup. Um, I got a text from Braden saying, yo, the light's in the way. And then he goes, "Never mind, it was a webcam because he saw when I switched cameras. Oh, okay. All right. So I've got, I've tied my, uh, my thread on and I'm just going to put, and I do this the, the normal dubbing way. I'm just going to put a little bit of dubbing on here. doesn't matter what color you don't even see this, but it does have a function. So I basically want just a dubbing ball right here at the back of the hook. One thing I want to say real quick, What's we posted that? a giveaway on Instagram on uh, Friday. Nobody's got it. And nobody's got it mm -hmm. yet. So there's a picture of 10 20 foot long bars of material that we use to make our spools. And the deal was, if you could guess how many spools we could make out of that within about plus or minus plus 50, or minus 50. Yep. you get a t-shirt and a neck gaiter and, and stuff. And nobody has commented the right number yet. So if you want to go and give it a shot, head over to the Norvice Instagram. It was supposed to run until the end of this. I'm all right with leaving it until somebody gets it. Yeah. All right. So I've got my phone is about ready to die on battery and the, the, the iPad is seized up. So I'm, I'm not worried about it. Just, just feed me the questions. Okay? okay. All right. So we've got our dubbing ball on and we're going to do a Palmer Marabou tail. So when you're Palmering Marabou, it is very important to pick the right marabou feather and we're going to do two colors. Okay. So we're going to do white and we're going to do a pearl gray on the camera. It's probably not going to show up that well, the contrast between the two. Um, but in, when you see it in live in your hand, it, you, you can definitely see the two colors. So when we're palmering marabou, this is what we want to see. Okay. I want, I want nice, even, barbules coming off the feather. I want it to be straight. I don't want these to be cut or burned off. Most of this we're going to peel away anyway. Hold it on the in between the camera and the hook. Okay. So that way they can actually see it's blurry when it's that far away. Okay. So that's that's what we're looking for. So we've got a little delay here. So I want to make sure that you can see that. Um, we want the stem straight. We, we Basically, you're looking for a quality feather. That's much better. Okay. And, and as you go deeper into this fly tying thing, you're going to realize, take the time to pick the proper materials. By contrast, this is a feather out of the same pack. Okay. This is garbage, in my opinion. I won't even use it. It's going to go right in the, in the trash. I bugger with it. Marabou is like $2.50 for a pack. Pick your feathers and the ones that are no good, throw them out. If you try to tie a fly with that feather, you're not going to be happy with the result. And, you know, it's, it's, it, you're, you're, you're kind of fighting yourself at that point. If you All right. cut down on the sorting time, you can try and use the extra select, but you have to pay attention because a lot of times the, th the stem gets much thicker 
and it becomes a real pain to try and palmer it if you've got too thick of a stem. So you really need to keep in mind how much of the feather you're using if you're going to go to the extra select packs. And that's why I like this, the, the blood quills, because of the thin, the thin stem, because it makes, them, um, makes it easier to wrap around the hook shank. So this is what I'm looking for here. I want about this much material. And what I'm going to do, we're going to tie this in by the tip. So I'm going to stroke it back. No. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're looking for in a prepped feather. Now this is the white one. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it down here on my stone and I'm going to take my gray one. Okay. Which is another, this is pearl gray marabou blood quail and I'm going to prep it. And these, the two patterns that we're going to tie tonight are actually very, very similar in the way that they're constructed, but the end result is totally, totally different. Okay, and there's, there's my prepped gray feather. Okay, so I'm going to lay them right on top of each other. Okay, so I've got the gray on top of the white and these are my these are my two tying points right here okay i'm gonna stroke these back i love working with marabou we have a whole series of flies that is based off of this technique right here they're called the um the snot rocket and you can blend the colors do contrasting colors and it really makes a, a nice kind of effect on the fly it casts not very well but in the water they move like crazy all right so i've tied them in by the tip i've advanced my thread to the end i'm going to throw a half hitch in here and i'm going to go on my cradle take my hackle pliers I'm going to grab both stems all right now the secret to this is to keep the feather as perpendicular to the shank as possible and I'm going to go one rotation and then I'm going to and this is very important I'm going to stroke everything back and make sure that I'm not trapping any of the previous of the fibers from the previous wrap underneath the current wrap. I'll stroke this back and then I'll do a one rotation. Or a full rotation behind you over here. And I'll stroke this back. And then sometimes I will even get in here and I'll take my bodkin and I'll just kind of pick this stuff out to make sure that it doesn't get that it doesn't get knotted up. Now I can see I got a little problem starting right there. I gotta get that out. There we go. And it can look kind of rough while you're doing it, but the finished product looks pretty good once it's yeah. all tied off. And... Okay, so I got one more. And let me reclamp with my hackle pliers. Stems wanting to walk around on me. Okay. And I got one more. No, I'm going to take that one off. All right, I'm going to tie it in right here. I'm gonna lay my hackle pliers down. Okay, now you can see, you can see the two stems of the feather. There's one there and there's one there. Okay, so I'm gonna lay these pliers down and I'm just gonna let the weight of the plier and I'm gonna put my finger right here so that they don't unravel. Okay, it's kind of tough to see because my finger's blocking it, but now my bobbin's gonna come off the cradle. I'm gonna come back to the hook and I'm gonna go three wraps underneath catching both of the stems, three good tight wraps. And then I'll switch to the front and I'm gonna go three wraps in front. Now I've got it captured. I can come in here and I can clip these stems off right flush to the, uh, to the hook. Okay, now I wanna come in here and I'm gonna take my bodkin and I'm gonna separate these and make sure that they're spread all the way around the hook shank evenly. And then you can also take your brush and brush them back. 
we'll split it around the so that it goes evenly around the bend of the hook. Now Marabou gets a, in my opinion, a bad rap for not being durable. And I do not agree with that. You've got fives that have caught probably 15 or 20 pickerel. The fibers just move out of the way on the teeth. It doesn't shred them like everyone says it will. Well, it, it also has to do with the way you tie it in. So let me, let me brush this back. Okay. So now the most vulnerable thing on this feather it, are the stems right here. These, like Tyler was saying, they're, they're, they're wispy, they're light, they'll move out of the way, the fish can chew on them. And even if you lose a couple, it, it, there's so many, it doesn't, um, it doesn't matter, okay? But the stem can be a problem. So I've got my feather on, it's palmered all around the shank. I'm gonna pull it back. Now I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna wrap back over top. And what I wanna do Remember that dubbing ball that we put on? I want to wrap back right against the front of that dubbing ball. And you got to kind of feel with your fingers and it's right, it's right there, okay? So now this is the feather going backwards. This is light and wispy. You don't have to worry about it breaking. This is the portion that you got to worry about. So that's what we want to reinforce. So what are we going to do? I'm going to take our vise and we're just gonna lay some thread over top of it. And we're just covering those stems up. And there you go. Now that is extremely durable. If you wanted to add some Zappa Gap or something, this would be a good time to do it. But so now, and I know this isn't gonna come through in the camera, but as I'm sitting here looking at it, you have a blended white and gray tail of this particular fly. And what that dubbing ball does that's underneath the, um, the feather, it spreads it out so it doesn't allow the feather to, to mat down onto the diameter of the hook shank. And it also helps reinforce and, and give the, um, the tie-in point some strength. This is very, very durable. That, um, the pattern that I mentioned earlier called the snot rocket, they were designed for chain pickerel. We have a lot of chain pickerel and we fish for them a lot. And they are a cousin of the muskie and northern pike. And they just, they're, they're toothy they're bony they're they're hard mouth um fish and these things just fish forever so marabou if you tie it in properly can be um extremely durable okay now do you use the dubbing ball in the manner as if tying an intruder yes yes where the yes that's from. where it came from that's exactly where it came from yep that was keith he said never mind afterwards but i figured it was a good oh question. okay all right so our next one is going to be polar flash this is silver as I mentioned, this particular pattern is, is shad based. So when I see shad in the water and I see them flash, I see silver. It's not the, um, the kind of like pearl opaque flash that you get with some other fish. I see white and I see silver. And that's what I wanna kind of duplicate on this, um, on this pattern. I don't go crazy with this flash. And this is kind of a holographic. So there's some silver, there's some greens. This is a, this is a cool material. I'm going to advance my thread up to the front. I'm going to take this material. I'm going to fold it in around the thread 50-50. Bring the thread back up to the top of the shank. And I'm going to put a couple of wraps on. And then what I want to do, I want to split this. And I want it to come down both sides of the marabou. And we're going to wrap back to our tying point. And now you can see how much thread is over top of the, the, um, the, the stems of that feather. It's very, very durable. So now what I will do is I will take the, the marabou and the flash, and I will just, I want the flash just to be a touch longer than the marabou. I don't want to come in here and cut these all off the same length. I want to stagger them a little bit. I'm just going to come in here and do a little trimming. And there you go. That's going to be the tail section of our shad popper. All right, so for the next section for the body, oh, I got to do one thing first. Very important. When you're working with these heads, okay, you have, you have to give yourself enough room up here to get the head on, okay? When we go to put the head on, I'm going to cover this with thread so that the, the glue has something to bite into, okay? 
But what I do, and this is just for me so that I don't rush the head, if you wind up putting too much material on here, you will not get these popper heads on and you're going to have to take and do something else with your pattern. So what I like to do, I like to judge for myself about where this is going to wind up. So the end of the popper, I've got the, the head of the popper. I got the eye sticking out of the head of the popper. And then the end of it is right about here. Okay, so that's kind of my point of no return. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just build up my thread right here to give me a, a visual key. I've just got a little thread bump there. And I know that I don't want to go past this thread bump. So I don't want to go to this side of it. If, if you encroach on it a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, you got a little wiggle room. If you wind up wrapping this body way up here, you're never going to get this head on. Okay. So that's just a little tip to save you from getting two thirds of the way through a uh, pattern and then realizing that, that you've got a problem. All right. So I want to advance my thread back all the way to that dubbing ball, which I'm feeling for, which is right there. Hey, Pat, what's up? All right. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a complex twist. So Tony showed this when he did his, his twisted bugger video a couple, a uh, couple weeks ago. It's a cool technique. Um, what I'm looking for here, I've got some white schlopping and I'm looking for a feather that's fairly long and fairly even. I don't want the, the feathers that are shaped like a spade that are, that are narrow and, and really wide at the bottom. I'm looking for something that's that's within reason fairly even. You need me to get the whiting cape? No, this is fine. Okay. Yeah, that'll work right there. Okay, so here's the one that I've chosen. Okay, you can see it's straight. It doesn't have a lot of taper to it. It is wider at the bottom than it is at the top, but it's not it's not crazy wide at the bottom or the top. So I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to peel all of this fluffy stuff off of the bottom. And I just want solid, good feathers on here. Okay, so there's, it's going to be part of my body. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this by the tip and I'm going to lightly stroke this back. Okay. Just like that. He said, he said, OGS is still guiding. And I'm and gonna- And Casey Hart reacted it because she doesn't know what it is from the Norvice account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tie that in. And I don't really care what this underbody looks like. You're not gonna see any of it when we're done. So if it looks a little, a little crappy, that's fine. All right, so our next material is going to be silver UV polar chenille. All right. And basically what I'm going to do, first thing I want to do is find the end of it. There it is. And I want to cut a piece off that's roughly the same length as the feather down to the stem. Okay, I'm going to clip that. I want to clip a little bit off of this end just to give me a tie-in point. And I'm going to tie this in right back to the where I tied the feather. Okay, now I'm going to advance my thread up to here. Throw a half hitch. And I'm going to go on my cradle. Okay, so I've got two materials tied in here. I've got the feather and I've got the polar chenille. And what I'm going to do, fluff that out just a little bit. I'm going to marry these two together and I'm going to grab the stem of the feather as well as the polar chenille at the same time with my Tackle pliers, and I like these kind of the, these ones that you that, that clamp down because they hold the two the two pieces um, 
together nice and nice and steady. All right, so for this, I don't want to get the marabou mixed in with my body, so I'm just going to put the hair clamp on there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the feather and the polar chenille, and I'm just going to twist it together. Okay, now the secret to this is to twist a little bit, and then this is just a, a regular toothbrush, and just brush it out because the, the polar chenille and the, um, the, the feather barbs will, will, will get wrapped around themselves and you gotta pick that stuff out or you'll get dead spots in your body. Okay, so you twist a little bit and then you brush it out. And what this is doing, it's, it's doing a really cool technique where it's taking two materials and it's blending them together. So you, you can see, when I hold it up like this, you can see the silver of the, the uh, polar chenille and the white of the feather. The other thing that it's doing is it's taking the core of the polar chenille and it's it's wrapping or braiding it around the center stem of the feather. And if you look at the at the center, you can see that. And it really strengthens up this um, this feather and, and it makes it very durable. So you, you don't typically have to worry about your hackle stem blowing, or in this case, the stem of your schlappen feather blowing and, and unwinding. So you just wrap a little bit and brush, and that's the secret. Don't don't go to spinning this thing, you know, crazy, because it, it'll get all knotted up and matted up on you. And then it, it, when you wrap it, it's not going to look good. So you do just twist a little bit, brush it out when you, and you do a few, and you'll be able to recognize the spots that are going to give you trouble, and you can just work on them. Sometimes take your bodkin, come in here and and pick some stuff out, if need be. But the brush, for me, the toothbrush seems to work well. These Velcro, these Velcro grow brushes would work great as well. Um, but if you I do end up with a dead spot. It'll still be fishable while you're learning and figuring it out. It's just not going to look as pretty. Okay, so now what we're going to do, and if I was at a show, I would have a little pot of water here to um, to do this. But being as I'm not at the show. And you guys aren't going to be touching this fly because it's going to get right in my box. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take, I'm going to lick my fingers and I'm going to take these fibers and I'm going to pull them back. So that they're all kind of on, on one side of the, um, of the feather. And now we're going to wrap and then we're going to eight each revolution. We're going to pull back. And we're laying these wraps one right in front of the other. We don't want to wrap up on top. So you're basically doing touching wraps. And we're going to advance forward to our point of no return. So if you were going to put a rattle Yow! underneath the complex twist is where you would put it. I don't. The question is, if I was going to put a rattle in this, would I put it under the complex twist? Um, the answer is yes and no. I don't typically put rattles in poppers. Reason being is when you're popping it, I don't believe the fish can hear the rattle anyway. We do um, make a couple of similar patterns in sliders where the heads turn around backwards and they dive under the water. Those I will put rattles in. And yes, I would put it right underneath this complex twist. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go. I'm gonna come off my cradle, my auto bobbin. I'm right back in and ready to tie. Now I'm going to get, you got to kind of fish your thread through because you don't want to trap any fibers, but I'm going to get a couple because you've got the feather and you've got the core of the, um, oh, sorry about that. And you've got the core of the Palmer chenille. So you got a lot of material that you're trying to cinch up here. So I'll do three or four wraps behind, three or four wraps in front, and then I'll do a couple more behind. And I really want to make sure that I get this locked in. And we'll do a couple more in front. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come down tight to the body and I'm going to clip this. Okay. Now I'm going to stroke all of these back. And I'm going to cover this thing up with thread. Okay, so there's your complex twist body. And again, you may need to take your bodkin and you may need to kind of run it through here and, and pick these out. 
and you can brush it sometimes if you brush it forward and then brush it back it'll it'll veil back over the uh over the tail the way that we want and it's 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 a very durable body you can do a lot of stuff with it you, you can you, th this is two materials you can do you know a bunch of different materials if you like it's it's a very very versatile technique i really like it and i use it in a lot of my patterns okay so now you can see the white and the silver kind of theme that we're going for with this so i actually i call this this color bleeding shad and in our our one smallmouth river we have a very very good population of shad and it's like candy to the smallmouth and we tie a lot actually have three patterns that use this foundation in this color and we fish them all the time all right so now we're going to finish this off we're going to put a collar of laser dub on it which is going to butt up against the um the back of the head it just kind of fills the space between the head and the um and the body it does get we're using a synthetic dubbing so it does give it a um a um a uh, little bit of flotation and I just think it it looks better. So we're going to do white on the top and then like I said this is called bleeding shad so we're going to do red on the bottom. And when I'm doing these collars I typically tie my bottom color in first. Okay, so we're going to pull a little bit out and get a little bit more than that. And then I'm going to take this and basically I'm just, I'm putting it together and I'm pulling it from the middle and then putting it back together. And I pull from the middle, put it back together. And what that's doing is it's taking all of the fibers and it's lining all of the fibers up so that when I, and if you have any mats, I don't know if you can see that there's a mat right there. You want to get that out. Okay. And this is about, I guess the thickness of a, maybe a match stick or so. Okay, so that's gonna be my bottom portion of my collar. So I'm gonna index the vise around to my 180 point, which I know is the exact bottom of the hook. I'm gonna take this hank of material. I'm gonna tie it in in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it down, making sure that I'm not gonna stab myself with that hook point. And I'm gonna do two loose wraps and I'm going to come back and I'm going to situate this and I want to make sure that it's kind of around the bottom half or the bottom 180 degrees of the, of the hook shank. What colors will you use most for large mouth? For large mouth, um, I, well for large mouth I, I would probably fish the second popper that we're going to tie more than this one. Um, this is a great, it, it's a bait fish color. So it's a great color for large mouth, um, large mouth. I like black too. So I do this in black and chartreuse and I, I really, I really like that. Um, but it, you know, it, you're already fishing for large mouth. So you, you had, you're already fishing with poppers. So just take the poppers that you've, that you've had good luck with and try to try to duplicate or em, emulate those colors with what we're doing here. All right. Now we're going to come up to the top. I'm going to get a bit of the white. <coughs> and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just kind of pulling these out and lining them up. Now I'm going to lay this right on the top and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do, and I'm tying this, these wraps are going in the same place on the bottom and on the top. I'm not advancing the thread forward or back. They're all going right on top of each other. So I'm going to do two loose wraps and then it's going to allow me to kind of manipulate this around and push it and make sure that it's on the top half of the hook shank. So the white you want on the top 180 degrees, the red you want on the bottom 180 degrees. Okay, now that I've got it where I want, I'm going to cinch that down. I'm going to take the white and I'm going to fold it back, put my thread in front of the white and I'm going to take the red and I'm going to fold that back as well. And then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap right back to my tying point. So I'm basically pinching this together. Get some good tight wraps on there. OK, 
Okay, now I'm just gonna just throw a half hitch, get my bobbin up out of the way. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna brush this back. And I'm gonna brush the bottom back. And this, this red is a little long, so I'm gonna peel some of that out. Okay, now see now see how you're getting the kind of silhouette. You've got the tail and you got the underbody, and then you got this laser dub that's veiled over top. And when it gets wet, all of that stuff on the underbody shows through, and it just makes for a killer, killer pattern. Okay. That looks good. Okay, now check with my head. Yeah, I might have a bit of a problem here. Well, we'll see. Okay, now I need to give something for the uh, for the glue to bite into. So we're going to activate the rotary function of the vise, going to spin the vise, and I'm going to lay down a good heavy thread base on the, the rest of that, that bare hook shank. Okay, throw a uh, throw a quick whip finish in here. And cut my thread off. All right. Now these these Flyman heads, I've already I've already prepped these. I put the eyes in it. This is the medium Flyman head. They make them. This is a new pattern we're working on. It's a slider. That's the small head. And I, I think they make a size smaller than this. They make a mini. Okay, You've so they got some blue damsels in it, remember? They they well I used this for the ones that I just did, but I I, I think they make a, 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 a smaller than this. And then this is the large. Okay, and they make a size bigger than this, they make an extra large. So what one of the questions earlier is can you tie this in multiple sizes? Absolutely you can. So this uses the um, the four millimeter eyes. So I have this the Flyman, the ice living eyes that I've already put in the sockets. Okay. And the Flyman um, heads, they don't have a hole in them. So you, you, I've already pre-punched the hole, but you have to put the hole in with your bodkin. And what I do is I start from the front. And if I'm doing a popper, I start dead center. And then I just use this line here. And, and I just kind of slowly work my bodkin down until it comes out the back hole of the um of the fly okay now test fit these things first because once you glue this you have one shot to get it on and if you miss your shot you're going to have to cut the head off and start over another trick that i like to use um sometimes the um the uh, bodkin the hole isn't big enough so i'll take my my super fine point razor scissors and i will run i'll run it up in the in the back of the hole like so and then i'll just take and i'll open the scissors and what that does is it kind of stretches the foam and it opens the hole up a little bit okay and i'm going to test fit this okay and we are good that's what the finished fly is going to look like all right so i'm going to take this off and i'm going to put the scissors back up inside the hole because I don't want the hole to close up. And for years, I used the um, the zap -a gap or the the zap cement for this for attaching the um, the heads. And when I watch Grant do his um, video where he's attaching the big slider head, he uses the Loctite gel. And I started using that, and I really like it. Reason being, I can put it on here, and I can kind of this is a, it's definitely a thicker consistency. And I can put it where I want and it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. Whereas with the thinner stuff, when you brush it on, you're constantly taking the vise and you're rotating it up and down because if not, it's going to drip down onto the um, onto your um, to your base. All right. So now you also have a little bit longer working time with it. A little bit, but don't let that fool you. You when you get it, when you touch this head to that glue, you better get it on there because you'll feel the glue activate and it'll actually get, the, you'll feel the foam get hot and you've got about five seconds. And if it's not set in five seconds, if it's crooked or whatever, then that's where it is. And you can either fish it that way or you're going to have to cut it off and start over. All right, so I've got my vise locked in the zero position so that so the hook is straight up and down. And you can use this, this line here as a guide. 
I'm going to pull my material back. I'm going to get my head on and I'm going to ram it home. And like I said, you've got a little bit of time and that's it right now. That glue has the head and it is not going anywhere. Okay. Easy peasy. That is the O'Neill's twist and pop in bleeding shad. And we'll take after I get the head on and we'll brush this out. And there you go. So we fish that for smallmouth um, in that size. We'll tie a size bigger for smallmouth. Um, you can tie these down like panfish size. And we have some great big, you know, ones that are um, probably about, oh, six inches long. And we'll fish those for striper and largemouth. So it's different hook, same hook, but different size different size head, all the materials are the same. You can tie these, you know, little short guys for panfish or great big ones for, uh, for striper. Any questions on that? No, it's at 7.42, so let's just move right into it. It's at 7.42 already? Wow, that took longer than I thought. Okay, so we'll set him aside. All right, so number two is gonna be our frog popper. And it's going to be the same size. Okay, same hook. Just glued my fingers together. And we're going to use these frog legs for this. So we get these from Pat Cohen, the guy who does all the uh, all the deer hair spinning. It's one of his products. Uh, website is rusuperfly.com. He makes them. This is a small. And he makes one size, I think he makes a mini. He makes one size smaller than this. And then this is the extra large. So the guys that were asking about largemouth bass, there you go. And we do fish these. I tie this in an articulate, articulated version with the extra large head and uh, throw these around lily pads at, at summertime and, and the largemouth just tear them up. I was throwing that for snakehead this weekend. Now, the um, they're white when you get them. They're all white, okay? Got a and it's question. No what's the question? The head on the popper. Now I don't paint popper heads. Um, I, I think the guys that do, I, I think they're they're beautiful. It is it's borderline an art form. Um, I personally don't believe that they catch more fish. I think they catch more fishermen. If I had more time, I would probably do it because I think it looks really cool. Um, but it's, it's white or, you know, green or orange or black or whatever color I'm, I'm tying of the fly. Um, so the, the legs and he does frog legs. He does, um, uh, like a, like a twisty tail, uh, flutter legs. He does, um, the Helgramite bodies, um, crayfish claws. So he does a lot of stuff, but they all come in white and you have to dye them. And the dyeing is simple. This product called Dynaflow. It's a fabric dye. Okay. You just shake it up. You take your, your legs and I will, I will typically clamp them with a, uh, with a hackle plier or this thing from, uh, from Loon, right? I'll clamp them like that. Dunk them straight in the bottle, bring them straight out, lay them out on a paper towel to dry. That's it. Now the stripes that are on the legs, I draw those on with a uh, fabric marker that you get at Amazon. You get everything at Amazon. Okay. If, if I'm tying flies to fish, to be honest with you, I don't put the stripes on them. Um, again, just like painting the heads on the popper, I don't believe that it does anything, but it does look cool. All right. So let's get started here. Same thread as the last one. We've put the link in the comments if uh, you want to go buy some of Pat Cohen's tails. I'm just going to lay down a little thread here. Okay. Now that they have this tab, this little tie-in tab right here, and you want this, the, the B10S has kind of like a double drop on the, on the bend, so you can't really get to the barb of the hook. So typically the point of the hook on your B10S is your tie-in point. So I'm going to lay them down like so i'm going to take a couple of loose wraps on that tab it's a size one hook correct it is a size one yes this is a b10s size one this is the medium set of legs and it's going to be a medium popper head with the four millimeter yellow dragon eyes 
And when this goes up on YouTube, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, the full uh, material list will be um, accompanying the, uh, the post up on YouTube. So I'm going to put a couple of loose wraps on there, and then I'm going to just manipulate this so that the, the legs are hanging dead center on the, on the hook. It's very important that the legs are perpendicular to the shank or to the uh, bend of the hook, because if the legs are crooked, the hook is, however far the legs are crooked, when it's sitting in the water, that's how the hook is going to sit. These, these legs ride right at the surface of the water. Okay. And now I'm going to tie these in. And the stuff compacts very easy. It's very, very easy to tie with, very easy to work with. All right, so here's my head. Like I said, it is the medium head, and I've got the four millimeter uh, yellow dragon eyes, which are cool. It, it looks like a frog. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to mark my tie-in spot, which typically, if you do this right with these legs, it's right at the end of that, that little tab that we, uh, that we tied in. Okay. Uh, Brandon, we, uh, Brandon Moon asked, have we tried the Dohiku Stinger? Uh, no, we haven't. We've got so many V10Ss lying around. Between that or the Arex TP610, pretty much most of what we use for streamers and poppers. Yeah, you're saying it's almost identical to the B10. It, 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 when I get into something, I, I mean, when when I made the commitment to B10Ss, we bought like I don't know how many packs of each size. So. We, we have been playing around with the Eric stuff. I will take a look at that, but we've got so many B10Ss, and, and I just love that hook. So, And just want to remind everyone who's watching, who was not watching at the beginning, if you share this live feed, you're entered for a chance to win a Norvice neck gaiter slash fuff, whatever you want to call it. So if we're at, I believe, almost 60 shares right now, if we break 100, we'll give two away, 150, three away, and keep going from there. All right, so same body as we did before. This is, uh, this is again, it's, it's schlopping. This is Highlander green. So you, you got to kind of play with your colors. This particular color for the dye is called chartreuse. And then we use Highlander green. And this head is, the, Flyman makes two different colors. They make green chartreuse and yellow chartreuse. This is the green chartreuse head. So when this gets done, all of these colors kind of blend together and it looks pretty cool. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick a uh, pick a decent looking slopping feather that's straight, not looking for a lot of taper here. And we're going to peel it off. Okay. I'm going to stroke these back. And I'm going to clip that. And I'm going to tie in the tip of my feather right here at the back of the legs. And again, I don't care what this looks like underneath because you're not going to see it. All right, so I don't know if um, any of you guys know let me get to my next material first. It's polar chenille. It's going to be in yellow. On our other website, O'Neill's Fly Fishing, which is actually the parent company that owns Norvice, um, we are making some modifications there, and we're turning that into an online fly shop. So we've just added TFO rods. We are um, O'Neill's Fly Fishing. It's now TFO dealer. So I, I can tell you this, all of the rod companies, and, and I mean just about all of them, are low on stock right now because of COVID. And if you're looking for something, uh, we had a guy, as soon as we put it up, he was jonesing for the, the new A2X8 weight and we had it. So if you're looking for a TFO rod, head on over to O'Neill's Fly Fishing. And when you're there, join the mailing list. We're adding um, products periodically to it. So you might be able to find something that you need. So I've got my, my slopping feather on and I've got my yellow, um, uh, polar chenille. Same thing. I'm going to marry them together. I'm grab the stem and the core with my hackle pliers and I'm going to twist it. And then I'm going to twist a little bit and I'm just going to brush it out. And this is why when, when you start with this feather, you're like, man, this feather is really long. 
Well, when you twist it like this, it's amazing how much they shorten up. So you really need to start with a long feather, especially if you're tying this on a different hook where you have a little more real estate. We were talking earlier um, about putting a rattle in. And if I'm doing a slider and I do, I do one of my sliders exactly like this. Yeah, uh, turn the, so the frog legs aren't facing the camera. So the, it, it's a close okay. enough to the green screen. It's trying to throw the logo up on the okay. frog legs. Um, somebody asked earlier about putting a rattle in and, and I do, I would put a rattle in, but I would use a longer hook. That's where I use the, um, the, uh, Eric's, uh, TP 610. So you have more real estate to cover. So you need a bit of a longer body. Now I've got it all twisted up. So you can see, I've got the nice green and yellow that looks like frog. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap and then I'm going to stroke it back. All right, I had to turn the green screen back off for a little bit. Okay. It's trying to put it's the trying Norvice, to put the Norvice logo, logo on the frog, frog legs. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, and the schlappen because okay. it's close enough to the same color. Is that Casey texting you telling you to turn the green screen off? No. No. All right, and we're going to go right up to our point of no return, which is right there. Okay, now take my bobbin, come back to the hook shank, and I'm going to get three good solid wraps underneath. We'll get three more in front, and I repeat that. Three more in front. And now I will come in here and I will clip my excess off tight to the body. Looks like frog lays a little hula skirt on. Stroke all this back. And I'm gonna lay down a fair amount of thread to get that all good and tight. These things are unbelievably durable. Okay. in here and pick this out no questions must be doing that good of a job uh, teaching so don't forget to share this if you haven't already we'll put you into running to win a uh, norvice uh, neck gator okay now we're going to do a collar just like we did on the um on the first fly we're going to use laser dub again we're going to use this is uh green chartreuse on the top and then we're going to use yellow on the bottom so when i'm doing a two-tone collar i always do bottom color first i'm going to pull a little bit of yellow out okay get a little more that first fly I tied, that was, that's the actual um, same pattern that was on the, the header for the Norvice tires page. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, Mike has been posting up on the, uh, on the, the background picture for the page, the, uh, the flies that'll be, that, that we're tying each night on the live. So Mike does a great job with that Norvice site, the uh, Norvice tires uh, Facebook page. So if you're not a member, um, go check it out. There's a lot, we're, it's almost a thousand members now, I think. Um, a lot of good people there, a lot of good advice and, and tips and tricks are uh, getting um, getting shared on that. So Norvice Tires on Facebook. All right, so there's our bottom color, our yellow. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the top. A little bit more. I love fishing big frog poppers around lily pads for largemouth. Something that you don't really think of a fly fishing, you know, throwing giant poppers for largemouth. But I, I just, I love doing it. Can you do this weedless? Oh, you could put a weed guard on it if you want to. Yeah, you, you could run a, um, you could run a mono loop uh, around the back of the hook up to the front. 
with a popper, that's kind of hard to tie the mono off because of the cupped face. But I'll, let me finish this up and I'll show you a little um, tip to do a different type of uh, a weedless or a different type of weed guard on this. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I want to fold the front back. I'm going to advance, advance my thread in front of the green. Now I'm going to come, to, come under here with my uh, fingers and I'm going to stroke the yellow back. Now I've got both halves of the uh, of the laser dub back over on top of itself. Let's put some good wraps on there, pinching it up against the um, the tie-in point. Okay, now I'm going to lay down a good thread base here for my popper head. Give it a baby spin. And we'll whip finish. Again, don't care what it looks like underneath because you're not going to see it anyway. Take this off. Now, I'm just going to come in here with my bodkin and I'm just going to pick this out. And this stuff is, this laser dub is kind of like Velcro. So even though I've got two different colors here, it's still the same material. And when you brush it around, it kind of sticks to itself. It's it's a it's a kind of cool material. I actually really like it. Use it this way a lot. It dubs great. It dubs if you're you're dubbing off your bobbin cradle. Um, it dubs fantastic that way. Typically take and brush it forward. And that kind of gets all the loose fibers and all the the um, gets gets it all kind of lined up. And then we'll just take and just veil it back over that body. And when this gets wet, all of those those body colors show through and it just it looks so cool. Okay, so here's my head. I've already pre-punched my hole in the head. I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna run it up through the back. And I'm gonna open this up. So I just the scissors were closed, I pushed them up in the hole, and then I'm just opening them a little bit just to stretch that foam out. And I'm going to do a test fit. Sometimes it's hard to get the eye of the hook to pop through the hole on the other side. So you do the same thing. Just put the scissors in the hole in the front and just open them up a little bit. This is why you test fit it. Because if I had glue on that and I couldn't get the eye to come through, um, I would have wound up cutting this head off and redoing it. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to stick the scissors back in. I'm going to get my Loctite gel. And I'm going to go all around that collar and I'm going to go all up on the stem. Got my vise locked into zero position so I know that my head's going to be flat. I got one shot, get it on there and run it home. Make sure there it is, that you got your eye coming through in front of the popper. And there you go. That's our frog popper. All right, guys, any questions on either of those? Uh, we've got to be hitting close to 8 o'clock. What time is it, Tyler? 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock right now? Okay. We'll hang out for another couple minutes. i uh, got a bit of a delay here on the uh, feed, so if you have any questions, ask away. So next week is Thomas Williams tying uh, rainbow trout and bluegill imitation. He ties some really cool-looking flies. You guys are going to... Going to oh, Thomas, the that. tapered brush game changer. That, okay, yeah. yeah. He, oh, cool. I, I didn't know we had him I, on I the don't on think the feed. He's tying game changers. Okay. He does uh, some really, really awesome uh, uh, imitations that use a lot of like laser dub style stuff, yeah. and then he paints them up, and they look really cool. I think that's what he's doing next week. So there's O'Neill's twist and pop in Shad, and there's twist and pop in Frog. All right. 
Everybody says they loved it. Nobody's asking any questions. So I guess that's good. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Be sure to tune in uh, next week when um, Thomas Williams is going to be on. In the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout or give Tyler a shout. Tim at nor-vice.com. Tyler at nor-vice.com. Or reach us through the website, info at Norvice, or on this Facebook page. So thank you guys. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you on the other side.